Vasa, head football coach at BB Comer High School. Coach Vasa, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, uh, just where you grew up, going to high school at, college, etc. Just tell them a little bit, the people a little bit about Adam Vasa. All right, uh, I grew up in Barnesville, Georgia. I went to Lamar County High School in Barnesville. Uh, after high school, played college ball at Kentucky Wesleyan College in Owensboro, Kentucky. Um, came back home after college and, and coached a couple years in Georgia. Did uh, two years at, at Lamar County High, my old at my alma mater. Uh, went to Loyola High for two years, uh, and then came to Alabama uh, as an offense coordinator and assistant coach at Winterboro High School. Uh, after a season of that, uh, became the head coach at Winterboro. Uh, I was at Winterboro for four years. Uh, had a good run there. Uh, went to Chillsburg and uh, for four years, and we had a had another good run there. And um, after Chillsbury, I went to Smith Station for two years. Uh, didn't have such a good run there. So uh, my family and I had the opportunity to come back to Sylacauga and, and come back to this area. That's where my wife is from. Uh, so uh, we had the opportunity to come back here. Uh, B.B. Comer's her alma mater. Um, so we, we took advantage of that. And, and uh, we are, are here and, and happy to be here. <clears throat> Coach, you got your coaching start at Winterboro back in 2008. You made the playoffs three out of four years as the head coach of Winterboro. Then you said you went to Childersburg, made the playoffs three out of four years at Childersburg, made the move to Smith Station, had a rough little two years there, and then came back to take this BB Plumber job where you guys have now made the playoffs two straight years. So briefly describe those previous things you had at Winterboro, Childersburg, Smith Station, and then discuss what brought you back to Comer and kind of said your wife's from Comer. So discuss what made that decision. Yeah, at Winterboro, um, man, it was it was an opportunity. You know, I knew I wanted to be a head coach. Uh, I knew that was the goal, and, and that's where I wanted to be. And uh, I got there a lot a lot faster than I than I thought I would. You know, I, I remember uh, going through the hiring process and, and being told that I was going to be the next head coach. And I thought, you know, man, this is great. I'm ready. I got everything together, and uh, I got to get spring football started. And uh, so I go to get spring going, and we get get the kids out there. I got my practice plan. I got everything in place. And the, the guys are like, uh, Coach, what, how are we gonna stretch? What are we gonna do? And I'm like, Oh man, I didn't even think about a stretch plan. You know, like, like you, you just kind of over. You, I overlooked it, and I was like, You know, this may not be such a great day, a great first day for me. But, um, but you know, we had four good years there, man. We we were able to win a region championship there, and. And that's where I that's where I cut my teeth, and that's where I got got my start. And um, you know, I, I've been able to to relay a lot of lessons that I learned during that time, uh, and to learn from those mistakes that I made there in, in the in the jobs leading up to this one. So, um, you know, after the region championship at Winterboro, uh, I had a chance to go to Chillsburg, and and uh, it's in the same county system. Um, thought you know this this was a, a good situation for us. Uh, we go into Chillsburg and have have uh, four good years, good solid years. You know, we were able to host a playoff game in Chillsburg um, after a 15-year drought. Uh, we were able to win a playoff game in Andalusia, uh, which hadn't been done in a while, and and uh, then host that game. So uh, we hosted a couple games, uh, a couple playoff games. Uh, we got beat by Charles Henderson the year that they finished runner-up in, in the state championship and. And they were, you know, that that was the year they were loaded. They were they were a solid team then. So, uh, from from Chillsburg, we went to Smith Station, and uh, you know, we felt like, you know, at the time, we felt like, hey, that's this is where we need to be. This is where God wants us to be. And um, you know, seven eight football, and I thought, man, I'm I'm ready to jump into this and and make this happen. And uh, it, it ended up being a situation where you go two and eighteen in two years. Um, you, you have to uh, kind of rebuild a program. You have to. There, there was a lot of a lot of moving parts there. So you go from 4A where you have a JV team and a varsity team to to 7A football, and you have 20 20 something assistant coaches. You have five different teams: a seventh grade team, eighth grade team, a ninth grade team, uh, a JV team, and a varsity team. So you've got roughly 350 athletes that you're over, 20 plus coaches that you're over, and um, you know things didn't work out and uh to be honest with you that when you know when you when you're told you're not good enough man it it, it it hurts a little bit so cuts deep and um but you have a choice and and you it goes back to you know as, as you're coaching kids you know like, hey you gotta overcome adversity you gotta do this you gotta do that 
and all of a sudden you're looking in the mirror and you're like, hey, you got to overcome adversity, you got to move on, you got a family to provide for. So, um, you know, immediately we got the feelers out and started looking for for other jobs. And uh, I remember, I remember how it all went down. You know, I I had gone to an interview uh, at another school and I was coming back through the Silicon area and I, I said, you know, I'm gonna stop by Comer and just ride around. And the job had posted like two days before and. Uh, I'm just gonna check it out. I'm gonna ride around, see if somebody's out there, see what's going on. And uh, drove by, and baseball coach at the time, Coach Mark Vincent, was on the on the field. And I walked out and and saw him. And first thing he says, "What are you doing here?" And I was like, "I was just passing through. You know, I'm I'm in a I'm in a tie. You know." He's like, "Something's up." And I said, "I'm just passing through. I asked a few questions about about Comer, about the athletes, and things like that." And um, drove on back to back to Smith Station where we were still living. And I remember walking in the house and wife asked him about the interview and this, that, and the other. And I said, I think I'm going to apply for the B.B. Comer job. And she said, what? And I said, yeah, I think I'm going to apply for the B.B. Comer job. And she said, uh, well, okay. And Comer's her alma mater. She's from Silicon. Her family's from here. Her, mom is, her mom's a Comer graduate. Uh, most of her uncles are Comer graduates. So uh, she's like, well, you know. All right, I never really intended on going back, back home, going back to my alma mater. But you know, if you feel like that's the right thing to do, then then let's do it. So, uh, so we applied, you know, and and uh, did the interview process, and and uh, we're we're offered the job, and uh, man, we're here. You know, it's uh, it, it's a good feeling to know that the weight's off your shoulders of <clears throat> of having to worry about your next job, and having to worry about um, you know what's what are you going to do next in, in the chapter of careers and taking care of your family? So um, we have two sons. We have a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old son. And, um, you know, we're, we're here until the 10-year-old graduates. You know, uh, you, coach, coaching has its own – coaches do their own thing. Coaches have their own philosophy about things. And some coaches move around quite a bit. Some coaches like to stay in place. And, uh, the trend is for for coaches to not stay very stay very long in certain places right now, and um, you know I've I've reassured the people here and and told them that we're we're here. You know, Ben, ben is 10 years old, and when he graduates from Comer High, we'll we'll see what what's in store for for myself and my wife. But uh, we're here. We're ingrained here. We're you know we're in a community. Our our kids play sports here, and um, you know it's. We're, we're part of this program. We're part of being here, and that's what it's all about. That's that's the buy-in. You know, pe- people ask, <clears throat> you know, about about the buy-in. What what do you what are you doing to get the buy-in? Man, we're just involved. You know, my wife teaches here. She's a tenth and twelfth grade English teacher, and uh, she helps our kids out uh, academically. She helps them out with ACT stuff and, and reading stuff with ACT, and um, you know, she's all in as well. She knows all these kids. She knows their situations. She knows what's going on with them. And, and that truly, truly makes my job easier when, when we can do this as a family and, and we're, we're all in it together. Well, if anybody needs assurance, you guys just built a new house here <laughs> no in doubt. the area. So I've uh, seen that on uh, social media. But, Coach, when you came to Carmen, there was, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, less than 15 kids yeah. in this program. So. How many? Yeah. What was the exact number? So they, they finished the, the season before I got here. They finished the season with thirteen players. They played week ten with thirteen players. So, well, the, coach, just walking around. <coughs> the, sorry, coach, I'm walking through the weight room and stuff this morning. You definitely have mm-hmm. double, triple, right. thirteen. So talk about the growth that you've seen so far. Yeah. So so seven through twelve right now, we're averaging about fifty three guys um, every every morning. Uh, we work out four days a week, Monday through Thursday. We start at seven o'clock on the dot. And um, we average those 53 guys. So, um, you know, they're here, they're ready to go. Uh, you know, my oldest is, is in seventh grade, so I drag him out of bed and, and, and he comes and does workouts. And um, the, the, again, the great thing we have here is, is being able to, to have some things that offer some things that, that help our kids out. So this year we have the, the feeding program. So every day our kids are gonna get breakfast and lunch. Um, and some days, and you know, most days it's a biscuit or pancakes or something like that. Every once in a while they'll do, you know, pop tarts or, or something fairly simple. But but they're getting food, you know. Um, out of the out of the four days, I know they're getting a hot lunch. Three of the four days, I know Wednesdays are, are sandwich days. 
um, but you know the guys are still getting a, a deli sandwich and chips and things like that so um, so that helps that helps the guys with with nourishment it helps make sure that they're fed and um, and keeps the guys here but um, you know our, our my coaching staff does a great job with our athletes and getting them uh, getting them in the places that they need to be and, and uh, where they need to be athletically and then uh, you know the the big thing is and we hit it on it this morning and, and we, we've got to continue hitting on it is uh, we've got to make sure one that we do the little things right and two we've got to understand and, and young coaches have to understand that we're building these kids for, for a lifetime we're you know sports is over at some point in time and and you got to be a man you got to be a husband you got to be a father and, and you got to be able to overcome the adversities of life so uh, you know, over, overcoming fumbling the ball or throwing an interception is easy compared to some of the things that life throws at you. So, Coach, your first year at Comer, you guys are playing in arguably the toughest region in the state of Alabama <laughs> at the time in 3A Region uh, 6. I mean, you're right, you only got Steve Smith and Pete Mock, yeah. and then you got Pat Prestridge, who's at Randolph County, mm -hmm. Jeff Smith at Welcome, the list goes on, Sachs, Weaver, Daryl Hamby was at his last year. So you kind of had a rough first year, but then the second year is really 2019 when you guys turned heads. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys mm -hmm. were, I believe, 6-6, six and six, mm -hmm. and you had made the second round of the playoffs mm -hmm. in this brutal 3A Region right. 6. You guys were able to, I remember one of the biggest games you guys had was at Pleasant Valley. You guys went up there and, if I'm not mistaken, scored with like less than a minute yeah. left, went for two and won the game at Pleasant yeah. Valley, ended up beating Fultondale. Yeah in the playoffs before falling to Geraldine. So you guys really turned heads that year. And then last year, you guys moved down to 2A and uh, you finished second in a really tough region mm -hmm. with Lynette, who was just coming off the state championship. Right. So talk a little bit about um, just last season before eventually falling uh, to Abel, who made the Super gotcha. 7. So, uh, uh, well, let's go back to the first season, the 2-8 and eight season. We played five homecomings that year. So. Uh, <clears throat> I remember playing sax. Like the we opened up region play with sax, and we get there, and coach is like, "Coach, it's homecoming." I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, it, it's homecoming. Nothing personal." I was like, "I get it. I get it. I understand." You know, so so five homecomings later, and, and a two and eight season, um, you know that that was a, a tough year. But uh, you know, you don't want to di like you don't want to discredit those years because there there was guys on that team, there were seniors on that team, that that came out and played for a new coach. They came out after some of them after enduring what they had endured, and then some of them that, that hadn't played for a year or two because they just didn't want to play or whatever reason. <clears throat> those guys committed to coming out and dealing with a, a whole new guy, a whole new staff. So those guys are really the foundation of the program that we built. And uh, I, I would, I would definitely want to make sure that we that we uh, recognize those guys. So uh, then you have the six and six team year two. We go six and six, tough tough year. And <clears throat> people talk about when do you grow up as a team, and when you, you know, when do you see that turning point? And that Pleasant Valley game was the turning point. That Pleasant Valley game was probably uh, in my coaching career. That was one of the better games I've been a part of. Um, had a lot of ups and downs. Had a lot of you know a lot of things that happened during that game, and um, Pleasant Valley scores late, and we have to go two minute drill with less than two minutes on the on the clock, and we're able to we're able to get the ball down the field. We score, and and we're going for two. Like like we knew right then we're going for two. Our our extra point kicking game is is very very uh, limited. We'll say uh, <laughs> so. Um, uh, so I knew we were going for two, and, and the crazy thing is, like, so Pleasant Valley, there's not a really a coach's box. So our coaches in the booth were actually up on the hill under a tree in, in a couple chairs. And uh, so we score, and our, our crowd goes crazy. Well, I can't hear my offensive coach tell me what, what his play suggestion is in the, in the uh, headphones. Uh, it's breaking up. I can't hear him, all this other stuff. So we get a delay a game. Okay, so our crowd is going nuts. They're like, what are you doing? You know, what's going on? And I still can't hear him. Apparently he's having issues up top too. So I call the play, we score, and all of a sudden I'm the, I'm the greatest coach in America because I called the right play. So, um, <clears throat> but, and, and I told one of, one of the parents, I, I can tell their voice, I told them after the game, I was like, you went from hating me to loving me in a matter of like eight seconds, you know? 
So, but that was a, that was a turning point of our season. I mean, that was that was when we really like gutted it out. We really stood our ground and and made plays. And that's that's what you look for. Playmakers make plays. So, uh, you know, and then you get into to the playoffs. We're a four seed going to a one seed. We go into Fultondale, and we prepared. You know, we felt like, hey, this is a winnable game. We can, you know, we can win this game. Uh, and when we prepare and prepare, we come out flat in the first half. Uh, I don't think we had a first down in the first quarter. You know, it, it was rough. And uh, we made a few adjustments, started moving the ball in the second half, in the second quarter, and then second half, we come out and and our guys literally took over the game. And it was an, it was just impressive to see uh, to see us physically take over a game. And that that's the thing. It, it, if I'm not, if I'm known for anything, I want to be known for having physical football teams. Like, I want us to be physical. I want us to hit hard. I want us to, to play hard, and win, win or lose, I want I want the other team to say, "Hey, man, those kids play hard." So um, we we physically just took over that game. So, uh, and then we were able that year. We had a, our first uh, all state kid in, in 15 years, in Brian Bradford, and uh, he was second team all state. Had a ton of tackles. Uh, he's actually the one that caught the two-point conversion to win the game against Pleasant Valley, and he was mostly a defensive guy for us. So, uh, and then you get to, to last year, and last year, new region. Uh, we'd never been to some of these places. Uh, it's been a long time. Last time I was at Ramburn was when I was at Winterboro. I mean, it was a long, long time ago, you know. Um, so, uh, and then you get so like we moved down to two A and. And there you are. There's Pat Prestridge and Randolph County again. By the way, Coach, we're in the same region y'all are again. I'm like, golly, I can't get rid of them, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and then on top of that, you get Lynette, who just won the state championship in 1A, and you know, you know what they've got. You know, Coach Story has a good program and has has great athletes there. You have Lafayette, who's who's got athletes all over the place. Um, you got Vincent and Fayetteville, who are close by, and they're um, they're very competitive and 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 get after it and play hard. So. Um, we really didn't know what we were in store for, so, uh, but, but we really, you know, week in and week out, uh, just kind of preparing and, and the kids, you can see the kids understanding, understanding the game, understanding our expectations and our lingo and, and what we want and things like that. And that, honestly, that's part of building a program. That's what, that's what makes kids comfortable is, is knowing the, knowing the terminology. So. Um, one thing about being here and, and being committed to being here is the terminology is going to change a lot. You know, we're going to have the same expectations. We're going to have the same, uh, basically the same terminology uh, throughout. So um, the kids really, really, um, you know, bought in. Weight room has been huge for us as far as buy-in. And um, for us to be able to go 9-2, uh, you know, a very unique end of the year. Uh, one thing about about our games one thing about the nine wins especially with the COVID issue and, and things like that is we won eight of those nine games on the field you know uh the first round of playoffs we're, we're the first team to ever get a first round bye in the playoffs in the alabama high school athletic association because of the COVID uh issue uh and honestly i i don't know you know i don't want to take away from abbeville but we, we were off week 10 because the storm came through. We were supposed to play Dable, and, and that storm came through. So we didn't play week 10. And then we had a bye against St. Luke's, uh, the first round of playoffs. So our kids didn't play for two weeks, almost three weeks. Uh, and then and we, you know, we practiced. We felt like we practiced hard and, and prepared. But when we get to Abbeville, we're not used to game speed. And, and they had plenty of speed on top of game speed. So uh, we, we got – we showed up about two quarters too late for the Abbeville game, and um, again, not to take away from them, they they played they played well. Obviously, they end up in the Super Seven, so um, they're a pretty good ball team. But uh, but yeah, man, the, the buy-in's been there, the the participation and the and the the uh, just the, the spirit of the program, the, the school spirit and all has been has been huge, and that's what that's what kind of makes Comer unique too. Is is we have. Uh, we're just a small community. We got, you know, a ton of kids that are involved. We have, you know, just summer workouts. You know, we have 53 guys. There's another 12 guys that are non-football athletes uh, that are working out with us as well. And then we've got about 70 females that are working out. And they're here four days a week, and they're getting after it and, and doing what they're supposed to do. So, uh, you know, also as the athletic director, we're, we're trying to build a total sports program. 
and that's that's what we want. We want these kids to be proud to wear Comer shirts in public. We want people to be uh, be like, hey, you, you go to Comer. You guys are doing good stuff over there, and uh, you know I, I appreciate um, our kids' efforts in doing in doing the right things. Coach, last question. It's kind of a two part. <clears throat> the first one is. You guys bring back 10 of 11 mm-hmm. starters, if I'm not mistaken, from last season's team. The only person you lose is what <laughs> you know, is probably one of the best running backs to come through Comer and, mm-hmm. uh, and Raphael. Um, and so then, so talk a little bit about what you have coming back this upcoming season. But then also the second part is I asked Coach Sanders from Donahoe this. If I came to BB Comer one afternoon after school and I came out to your guys' facilities and watched you practice, what can we expect from you during practice? What does a BB Comer practice look like? So, gotcha. So, <clears throat> so uh, first question, we do have a lot of returners back, and that's, um, you know, that's a good thing, um, but you also have to make sure that you keep those returners grounded and, and keep them level-headed. So, uh, one thing that we find comp- kind of tough in, in 2A football is creating competition. Because you have you have your starters that are, are pretty good, and then you have your younger guys that aren't quite there yet. <clears throat> but you want to be able to create competition, so that those starters are uncomfortable, and, and uh, are still competing and still working. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We have, uh, you know, we have a ton of our guys back. Our front five, uh, four of our front five are back. Uh, we're, we're looking to find a center right now. We've got three, three candidates that can do a great job for us. Uh, Drew Hallman, uh, who played center for us last year, has moved to F. He's, he's a fullback type kid right now and doing a great job for us. Uh, obviously, Devontae Carmichael is in the backfield uh, and, and at the quarterback position. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Devontae's, Devontae ran the ball well last year but didn't throw the ball well. And, uh, you know, you go from two two years ago in the six to six season, he rushes for a thousand and throws for a thousand. Last year, he rushed for a thousand. Uh, he only threw for about 370 yards all season. So, um, a down year for us uh, throwing the ball. But we are, you know, this year is a lot different because you can do OTAs, you can do seven on sevens, you can get that that throwing uh, competition in. So I think that'll help us out a ton. Um, and then uh, offensively in the backfield, Kamor Harris and Chris Garrett, um, both of them bring bring a lot to the table for us. Uh, you know, Kamor is going to be more of a power back. He's going to run over you. Chris Garrett's got uh, a little bit better uh, agility and, and cutting speed. Um, so, you know, we're looking at two guys to fill the shoes of one uh, in Raphael. Um, but we, we hope that they're able to be a, a one-two punch for us. And then... Uh, Dalion Welch has done great for us. Dalion's a, a leader for us and uh, plays a slot receiver for us. He's got great hands and catches pretty much anything that, that comes near him. So, uh, you know, offensively we're going to be we're going to be okay. Defensively, obviously, we have a bunch of guys back. Uh, defensively, we're a stingy bunch. You know, I thought spring game uh, playing Silicaga, we we tackled Malik Pope real well. I thought we got hats on on the ball real well, and he's one of the better running backs. Uh, in this area, so um, we, we're going to be a stingy bunch defensively. Uh, <clears throat> we've got some things we got to work on. We can't we, we can't give up third and longs. That's that's kind of our that's kind of our Achilles heel is is we'll get a third and long and think, hey, we're going to get you know we're going to get three and out and, and get the ball back, and then we'll give up a, a cheap shot over the middle or we'll give up some sort of play, and and you're like, well, crap, here we are, you know. And that happened to us in the spring. We had like third and 22 or something like that. We give up a big play, and we don't get the ball back. We don't. That's a position that we miss out on. So um, we, we've got to got to capitalize on those positions uh, and uh, make sure we get the the ball in our offensive hands as much as possible. Uh, special teams, man. Small school football, obviously. Special teams. Uh, I think you're. It took me a lot of a lot of heartache to to figure it out, but. Uh, even in small school football, whether you got two coaches or, or five coaches, you've got to spend time on special teams. You've got to you've got to really work on special teams. And uh, early in my career, I didn't, you know, we line up and kick. All right, you know, let's go work on offense, defense. And uh, but now we do we do special teams periods. We do we break our special teams down into um, into different drill work and things like that. Um, we've got probably one of the best punters in the state in Chris Wilson and 
Uh, I love Chris, and Chris knows that, but his form is awful. Like, it just, it's just the worst form ever, but he's got like a size 15 shoe, and man, he boots the ball, you know. Uh, he, he flipped the field for us a, a bunch of times last year. I mean, he's, you know, he's six six five kid, and uh, he's a sophomore, and, you know, he catches, he can catch the snap with one hand and drop the ball. Like, it's, it's ridiculous, but... Um, he flipped the field for us a bunch last year and really helped us. You know, Lafayette game, he probably helped us win that game because he flips the field early in the game and the ball rolls to the two-yard line. We get a safety. Um, we get a safety like two plays later. So, uh, you know, he, he helps us out with that. But we got to find somebody that can kick off, somebody that can uh, kick an extra point for us every now and then. So uh, as far as practice goes, man, our, our practices are organized. Our practices are covered in – you know, we have a practice schedule from pre-practice to post-practice. Um, you know, we're going to cover, uh, de depending on, on the days, you know, we, we before we get into the season, we break it up with offense, defense, uh, and kind of even it out that way and, and pepper in special teams. But uh, overall, we're going we're gonna to cover both sides of the ball. We're going to cover special teams. Um, we, we are a physical practicing team. Uh, you know, we have to be smart in the grand scheme of things, but we're going to practice. Uh, we're going to practice physical. And we're going to be physical in what we do. Uh, you know, we have a lot of parameters and guidelines that we have to meet uh, through AHSA, and that protects us and the kids. And we follow those uh, to a T. Um, but um, when when we are on the field and we are in pads, we're we're going to be physical. And we're going to. Uh, we want practices to be tougher than the games, and that's. That's kind of what, what we're trying to teach our kids mentality-wise is, hey, if practice is tough, it's going to make Friday night real easy. Coach, thank you for the opportunity to be here this, uh, today. Good luck this season. Man, I appreciate you guys coming down. Thanks a lot. Guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody, your name, what grade you're in, what position to play. My name is Zach Carpenter. I play right guard in uh, d -top. My name is Daniel Wilkes, and I'm a senior, and I play right receiver. My name is Drew Hallman. I'm a senior. I play fullback and defensive end. My name is Corey Anderson. I'm a senior. I play left guard, nose tackle, and a little bit of defense end. Uh, go ahead and tell everybody, how long have you been in David Coleman? I've been since I was in kindergarten. Kindergarten. Two years. About uh, four or five years. So you guys have been in David Coleman your whole life? Yes, sir. You guys just moved here recently, you a little bit longer. <laughs> so go ahead and tell everybody kind of about, uh, did you all play last year, I'm assuming? Yes, Talk about last year's season and probably what you gained the most from last season. Uh, I feel like we, I feel like we gained a lot, but we came up, like we came up short. I feel like we could have, could have did better. Yeah, like you said, I think we did better. I feel like we got a little big headed when we went into the second round and got whooped by Abbeville, and it kind of like taught us a lesson that you can't, you can't just be at all high at all times. Yeah, it definitely gave us. Uh, it humbled us more than anything because you know we come in off a nine to one season, and then we skip a week, but then we also have we have to we also have to skip another week due to a team losing, uh, forfeiting due to COVID, and it really just humbled us because we thought we were gonna come in on fresh legs, but that wasn't the case. So, a question non football related: Do you have any hobbies? What are things you like to do away from BB Comer? So, if I was to uh, follow you guys around, what's some things you're interested in or you like to do? Play, ba play basketball. Play the video games. Play oh, video games. Football, 2K, don't even matter, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, watch movies, play video games, um, work out. Uh, Thursday through Sunday, I play travel baseball. And weekdays, I work, I cut grass, do whatever I can to make a little bit of gas money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to, uh, I like to cook, play video games, and just, I like to relax. That's more so my vibe. What you be cooking? Anything during the uh, during the year, I used to, we always go to Coach Sapper House on um, on Saturdays, and we'll watch film, and I would cook the whole team just off This dude, so, yeah. <laughs> for real, <laughs> like, that's the shit. So yeah, like we had tacos. Uh, one day we had shrimp tacos, uh, chicken tacos, pancakes, breakfast. Yeah, we had the whole thing. <laughs> and I had something I was gonna say to you guys because y'all said video games and movies. What else? Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox. No. You said what? Xbox. Mm -hmm. so you, you don't really play video games. You just yeah, cut grass. 
play PlayStation, but you just cut grass and try to get gas money. Yeah. <laughs> Your parents don't give you no gas no, money? My parents do give me gas money, but when I ask for it, they, they, they get mad. Yeah. <laughs> they get mad. That's a staple of guilt trip, too. Yeah. So, guys, are there any goals you have for this season coming up? Yeah, I feel like uh, I don't want us to go out there and play out hard and don't come up short this year. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Do the best we possibly can, can be. I think I think we set the ultimate goal for this year is to win. Like if the past uh, two years, you know, we go around and get kicked out in the second round. And, but this year, we, we I feel like we have to win. I'm a senior. I want to win. I want to compete at the highest level possible, so I want us to win. What's it like playing for Coach Fawcett? Talk about Coach Fawcett and what it's like playing for him. He might, he might chew us out sometimes, but he just do that because he know we can – we can be better, you know, you know the potential that we can be and how good we can be as a team. He probably like one of the best coaches that came to come for him. Coach Fawcett works his way to make you a better man before a ball, a ball player. Like, he works harder for you, you to be better in your life than you are at football. I think I think Coach Fawcett is like nothing short of just one of the best coaches in Alabama, period. He's like he's he's everything these guys just said and some. So like he really does a lot of work for us, but also a lot of work for the school. Were any of you in the program when you guys only had was it thirteen players? Were any of you a part of that, or did you guys start playing after Coach Fossey got here? After Coach Fossey, I know I was there. All Coach after Coach Fossey. I moved here. after Coach Fossey. You were there before. I moved here before after Coach Fossey. Oh, you moved here after Coach Fossey. So is there a professional athlete that you? look after maybe you think you play like or anybody who's a professional athlete or somebody that's a model to you that you try to play like Aaron Donald <laughs> Aaron Donald Aaron Donald Odell Odell Beckham Jr. I'm you know I'm going I got Aaron Donald too on my list I love how Aaron played this. Yeah. He, he gives me a Luke McCaffrey. You find out lots, Bob. You know what I'm You want to give me a Luke? All right, guys. Last question I'm going to ask you guys, and if you want to ask anybody, can. What would you say is your top five, or let's rephrase this, your top three priorities in your life right now? I say staying out of trouble, getting my education, and uh, being a better person. Yeah. Stay out of trouble, get my education, get to see in life. God, family, and sports, and then like in school. Mine is like myself, my mental health, and my family, and then football. All right, guys, well, let's see what Yeah, I got a question for you guys. Um, obviously, Coach looks at you guys as leaders, or you guys wouldn't be sitting in here. Um, what does that mean you knowing that Coach Fossa has? that kind of mindset about you guys. He has that much trust in you to actually put you in front of the camera and, and, and basically tell the rest of the team that you guys are leaders. And that just made me feel like he, he trusts us and he, he wants us to do like lead everybody to the right way and do it right. Yeah, same thing. Makes me, it makes you feel really honored and that, that puts you like priority to be better for the younger kids and like make, the, make an example for them to look up to. Yeah, it builds a relationship that uh, that we know that Coach Fathers can depend on us and he's going to come to one of us guys if he needs anything or just to help out with the team in general. I'm going to start right back over here. Um, as a leader, one thing I like about the camera, you can't lie. And don't lie on film and don't yeah. lie when you're interviewing somebody. <laughs> you're going to be held accountable for this, so I want you to give us a promise and your teammates a promise of something you're going to do personally to make this team better and go as far as I can. I promise I will make this team. It, it, as much as my goal is to win, I promise I'll make this team compete at its highest level every Friday night when we step out. I promise I will give the team the best I got. I promise I give the team the best I got. I promise I'll give my all from the first quarter to the fourth our game. Guys, we uh, cover teams all over the state and this region you guys are in. If you guys can handle business in this region, you can play with anybody in the state. I'm telling you right now. Um, we see them all. So, good luck to you guys. And you guys handle what's in front of you first, and we'll move forward from that. Good luck. Yes, sir.